Hi guys, it's me Arden Lee. I am back with another video and today I am going to talk about what you can do when you know what your goals and your desired actions for forward movement are, but you're feeling blocked around them because of your past traumas. This is an inquiry that uh, came up from one of the members of the Repatterning Parlor, which is the free Facebook community that I moderate uh, surrounding the work of the Repatterning Project. And if you're interested in that, by the way, you can look at the description box and uh, there is a link to come and join us. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Come and say hello, especially if you have uh, requests yourself for topics that you would like to see me address in this video. So this particular subject is something that I have grappled with and, uh, and honestly that I'm still grappling with. Um, although I can feel where I'm making more and more progress along the way, uh, especially by, um, you know, by, by breaking things down into more manageable chunks. So um, let's talk a little bit about how our past trauma can affect our um, ability to take action to move forward, right? What happens is, um, and I'm really glad that the person who posted this question is aware of these things because that makes... Um, that makes it so much easier. So often um, we repress our past traumas and we fail to recognize where they are blocking us from taking action. And in that case, having that self-awareness and asking like, what am I really afraid of here? What's coming up for me? I know that I wanna move forward on these things, um, but something is is getting in the way. And what is that? And uh, and so if you're stuck in that space, I would really advise you to look back along your own timeline, you know, through everything that's happened to you throughout your life, which granted can be an, <laughs> an overwhelming process, right? But, um, but really uh, remarkably worthwhile. And look and decide, you know, what was the moment, what's coming up for me that's making these next steps difficult to take? Um, when I realized I was feeling stymied in my business, um, stymied in my ability to step into a position of leadership, um, I realized, I looked back along my own timeline and I remembered um, the point in time in my early 20s in which I was a professional dominatrix and uh, I had a, a sort of bevy of clients, you know, um, who I interacted with online on some of the BDSM forums and, uh, and everything went horribly, disastrously wrong. <laughs> um, the place where I worked was shut down by the NYPD Vice Squad. Um, my email was hacked by some of my professional competitors. Um, things I had written privately for uh, uh, for the training of the, the women who worked in the same house as me were leaked online. I was framed as a villain. Uh, it's a really long story, and I'm sure even just recounting these details sounds like ridiculous and, and far-fetched. And I'm not going to spend this whole video telling the whole story of what was happening to me. Um, but long story short, a lot of my clients turned on me, and uh, and and essentially this fantasy... Um, that I had promoted of being this professional dominatrix character that I, w I was um, embodying. It was, you know, because naturally, naturally um, a fantasy provider like that is, is going to come from a place of blended authenticity and fantasy. Was I um, sincere in my performance of that role? Yes, absolutely. Um, but at the same time, you know, those my clients didn't want to see me like in my sweatpants or whatever, dealing with very normal human problems that would have uh, kind of ruined the fantasy for them in their mind. So, um, so when all of this happened and that fantasy was shattered, a lot of people turned on me. Uh, it got really ugly, really nasty. I was outed in the New York Post. There were threats on my life. <laughs> you know, just just all this, all this crazy stuff um, that happened, and um, and from that time, I realized. I was having blocks to stepping into a position of leadership and to taking on clients. And I spent, um, I spent a while kind of working this out. And when I realized where this was coming from, um, essentially what I did was I 
I just started getting super real about um, what had gone wrong and about my current reality. And I asked myself, do I have a fear of the same thing happening? Um, back then, I had a really hard time understanding and enforcing personal boundaries. Am I going to allow my personal boundaries uh, to be as, um, as mutable as they were back then? And I can answer myself and I can say, no, the answer is no. I know now how to set my boundaries and I understand um, what my clients are purchasing from me and that uh, having, um, having me facilitate a service for them doesn't mean that they're entitled to whatever happens in the rest of my life and to dictate how I should be going about that part of my life, right? So if I now know better, I can look forward and say, okay, there's no reason for me to have these fears anymore, essentially. And, um, and that in itself is a process. <laughs> that in itself is, is certainly a process. And, and it helps. Um, and naturally, when we go back along our timeline and we understand why we took on these beliefs, like, okay, wow, I actually have a fear of having clients because I have past trauma around having clients. How am I supposed to be a facilitator if I actually have some deep-seated fears of having clients? And I can go back in and I can rework that belief by bringing my conscious awareness to it, practicing self-compassion and self-forgiveness for the way that that belief was formed in the past, understanding how and why it was formed, and getting to consciously choose a new belief that supports me, which includes amounting more and more evidence of clients who, um, who I have great relationships with and focusing on those and tuning into what it feels like to have relationships with clients that are um, mutually beneficial and healthy and supportive, right? So I'm gonna go back, essentially, I'm gonna look at the beliefs that my past trauma installed and I'm going to find evidence for how I can do things better and differently in the future, all while forgiving myself and practicing understanding and compassion for how those beliefs got formed in the first place, right? Is this making sense so far? From there, I think it's also really useful to get support, you know? There are things that, um, there are things that we're gonna have blocks around taking action on, um, especially in terms of our careers or our business or the things that we wanna move forward on and having uh, people you know, as, as accountability partners or as uh, you know, facilitators or assistants or, or however you want to uh, define these roles in helping us to move forward is going to be really, really useful. So for example, you guys, I have, um, I have real blocks uh, for myself, like around my web design, right? I, for whatever reason, like I'm great with language, I'm great with writing posts, I'm great with uh, you know coming up with content, etc. If it comes from a language place, but when it comes to visual design, I feel really, really blocked. And combine that with some of my past trauma that you know is maybe holding me back from stepping fully into uh, into my leadership. It means that if I don't have someone else who is helping me with this process who I am accountable toward, then I probably won't get it done. So uh, I hired an amazing web designer who herself is a, a very spiritual person, a spiritual practitioner who happens to also be very skilled in web design. And I expressed to her just earlier this week, I was like, thank you so much for holding space for me through my resistance to this, because I know that this is something that's difficult for me. And she's so great at asking the right questions and um, figuring out, you know, helping me to articulate what it is that I need and saying like, hey, you know, why don't you show me an example of a website that you want yours to look like? We find a couple of frames of reference and then she delivers on that and I get to go through and just say like, oh yes, okay, this is on point, this is on point and maybe this looks a little off, I don't know, but maybe we should change that or whatever. So, um, so as you are going through your process, having people who don't have your same past traumas to be able to break things down for you and help you, whether that's someone you hire or someone that say is an accountability partner where you're doing that for each other and it's an even exchange, that can be really, really helpful. And finally, breaking down the tasks that feel daunting into smaller and smaller steps. So I look at my to-do list and I try to break it down into as small chunks as possible so that it, it feels uh, less overwhelming to take those steps toward uh, that desired goal, that desired action. And in addition, 
sometimes even just the process of making that to-do list and seeing the things that I have in front of me, especially when they're broken down into smaller chunks, is helpful in my not feeling so overwhelmed by it, especially when uh, the person who asked this question said they typically know what they need to do going forward, but their past traumas are coming up and they're feeling blocked around it. So again, breaking those things down into small things and even just saying, hey, if I only get one thing done on my list today, that's going to add to the evidence that I am capable of doing this. And I'm just gonna do one thing going forward and then even if I take the rest of the day to do other things that I need to do that are unrelated or, um, or even just take the rest of the day to rest, you know, that's okay. Because the more you work this muscle of productivity, the more easily it's going to be able to be there for you in the future, right? The more you, you amount that evidence, the more you amass that evidence of your own capability, the easier it's going to be to believe in yourself and take those steps forward in the future. And again, I would encourage you to go back along your timeline, look at where those traumas happened, what beliefs they instilled in you, and give yourself that assurance and that confidence that it doesn't have to be the same way going forward because you've learned from those experiences. I've learned from those experiences. I'm smarter now, you're smarter now. We're not gonna let the same things happen to us so we don't have reason to hold on to those same fears, right? We incorporate the lesson, we retain all the wisdom, but we release the fears and the blocks that are holding us back, right? We can trust ourselves now. We're a little older, we're a little wiser, and we're not going to let those same things happen. So we know that we can move forward, we can have better boundaries in place, we can trust our discernment, and we can move forward towards our goals. And when that doesn't work, <laughs> remembering, um, to get that second set of eyes on it, whether it's a facilitator, a coach, um, or an accountability partner, um, and also breaking things down into those smaller chunks and amassing that evidence of our own capability, even if we're only taking one small action at a time, just one thing that we can do. Um, soon, it's gonna be easy to do that one thing, and we're gonna wake up and say, you know what, I can do three things today. I know I have the bandwidth and the capacity for three things on this to-do list, and we keep going and we keep furthering ourselves in that direction uh, where we are proving our capability to ourselves more and more um, at each possible chance. So thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful. And again, looking back along our timeline and figuring out where those traumas happen is not necessarily something that is easy for us to do on our own. So I absolutely encourage you, if this is work that you're looking to do and this sounds like the modality that is right for you, I absolutely encourage you to join in the Repatterning Project. We do it twice a year. Stay tuned for when the next one is going to be happening. Join the parlor so you can uh, get those updates. And uh, because looking back, looking back along our timeline and being able to see everything that happened um, and the patterns that happened there, I'll be honest, you guys, it often does, uh, it, it is often, most often, uh, really benefited by having that second set of eyes to see things a little more clearly than we can see them ourselves. Uh, because if we could see them ourselves, <laughs> we probably wouldn't have ended up uh, in that place to begin with, right? But that's kind of how, um, we're not to blame for that because that's kind of how um, trauma and belief formation works is that we take on those beliefs uh, on that level of unconsciousness and we kind of think that that's just how the world is from then on. So dismantling our worldview is a difficult process and often requires help and support. So if I can help you with that in any way, if our group can help you with that in any way, we would love to be here for you. So come join us and let us know if you need uh, further assistance uh, with that timeline work. And uh, it's one of my favorite things to do, basically taking everyone's wires and just disentangling them, figuring out where they all came from. Part of me that likes to like untangle knots gets very satisfied by that. Thank you guys for watching. I would love to support you in the future and I'll see you in the next video.